Goosebumps by R.L. Stein. The Werewolf of Fever Swamp. Chapter 2. It was hot and wet under the trees. The air felt sticky against my face. The broad palm leaves were so low. I almost reached up and touched them. They nearly blocked out the sun. But shafts of yellow light broke through, beaming down on the swamp like spotlights. Scratch your weeds and fines brushed against the w- my leg, my bare leg. Scratchy weeds and ferns leave brushes against my bare legs. I wish I had worn jeans instead of shorts. I kept close to my sister as we made our way along a narrow winding trail. The monocular strapped around my neck began to feel heavy against my chest. I should have left them at home, I realized. It's no- it's so noisy here. Emily complained, stepping over the de- a decaying log. She was right. The most surprising thing about the swamp was all the sounds. A bird trilled from somewhere above. Another bird replied with a shrill whisper. Insects chittered loudly all above us. I heard a steady tap, 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 like someone hammering on wood. A woodpecker? Palm leaves cracked as they swayed. Slender tree trunks creaked my sandals made fup fup sounds sinking into the marsh ground as I walked hey look Emily said pointing she pulled off her dark sunglasses to see we had come to a small oval shaped pond the water was dark green half rid- hidden and shaded floating on top of the white water lilies bending gracefully over the flat green lily pads pretty emily said brushing a bug off her shoulder i'm going to come back here with my camera and take pictures of this pawn Look at the great light. I followed her gaze. The near end of the pond was darkened by long shadows, but light slanted through the trees on the other end, forming what looked like a bright curtain that spilled over the still pond. It is kind of cool, I admitted. I wasn't really in the ponds. I was more interested in wildlife. I let Emily admire the pond and the water lilies a little longer. Then I headed around the pond and deeper into the swamp. My sandals slipped through the wet ground. Up ahead, a swarm of tiny gnats. Thousands of them danced silently in the shaft of sunlight. Yuck, Emily muttered. I hate gnats. It makes me itchy. Just look at them. She scratched her arm. We turned away and both saw something scampered behind a fallen, mossy-covered log. Hey, what's that? What was that? Emily cried, grabbing my elbows. An alligator, I shouted. A hungry alligator. She utterly 
uttered a short, frightening cry. I laughed. What's your problem, Em? It was just some kind of lizard. She squeezed my arm, hard, trying to make me flinch. You're a creep, Grady, she muttered. She scratched her arm some more. It's too itchy in the swamp, she complained. Let's head back. Just a little bit further, I pleaded. No, come on. I reached. I really want to get back. She tried to pull me, but I backed out of her grasp. Grady! I turned and started walking away from her, deeper into the swamp. I heard the tap, tap, tap again. Directly overhead, a low palm tree. The low palm leaves scraped against each other, shifting in a soft, wet breeze. The shrill chittering of the insects grew louder. I'm going home and leaving you here, Emily threatened. I ignored her and kept walking. I knew she was bluffing. My sandals creaked over dried pa brown palm leaves. Nothing turned her without turning around. I heard Emily a few steps behind me. Another little lizard scrambled across the path just a little from just in front of my sandals. It looked a li like a dark arrow shooting into an underbrush. The ground suddenly sloped upwards. We found ourselves climbing a little hill into the bright sunlight. A clearing of some sort. Beads of sweat running down my cheek. The air was so wet I felt as if I was swimming. At the top of the hill we stopped and looked around. Hey! Hey, another pond! I cried, running over. Fat yellow swamped grass, hurrying up to the water's edge. But this pond looked different. The dark green water wasn't flat and smooth. I leaned over it. I could see that it was dark. I could see that it was murky and thick like split pea soup. I made the it made disgusting gurgling and plopping sound as it churned. I leaned down closer to get a better look. It's quicksand! I heard Emily cry and then two hands shoved me hard. From behind. And that was chapter two. I know it wasn't a long chapter, but you know what? Can't always be long masterpieces. Well, I hope you enjoy this, and I'm hoping to read this maybe for the Hall Halloween season. It's almost here, especially at the recordings. And I hope to hear from you guys. I also wanted to let you know my book is currently on six ninety nine for the Halloween season. I hope you guys give a chance. Maybe check it out. I can always use a few buyers. Enjoy yourself. And remember, readers beware. You're in for a scare.